everybody. So what we're gonna be starting on now is uh, your assignment coiled from historic source. So what that means is I want you all to pick a culture of personal interest and research their traditional ceramics. Okay, so um, when you're searching, it's important for you to uh, use whatever culture ceramics. So like if I'm looking at Greek ceramics, I'm gonna type in Greek ceramics, um, not uh, Greek coil pot. Like make sure that ceramics is your, is your defining term, not, not coil pot. Um, just because even though we are building coil pots, coil vessels, um, you, you don't wanna use that because you're gonna find just a bunch of links to other people's um, other people's coil building projects. So if this is my my vessel, okay, this is what I'm looking for. I'm shooting for it to be between eight and ten inches. So if I'm trying to get this to be nine inches, um, you can just draw this um, on your printout if you want, or you could um, you could draw it on a separate piece of paper. But what you want to do is you want to grid this out to find out the diameter of the bottom because that's where most people go wrong is they make their the bottom of their piece too large and uh, they end up making their pieces consequently too big. So if I'm going to try to shoot for nine inches, I'm just going to rough this in in about thirds. Okay. Just throw a tic-tac-toe right on top of it. Okay. So if this is nine inches, um, that means that each one of these boxes is about three inches, right? So I'm gonna just ballpark this. I don't need you to, to make this exactly precise. Just do your best, okay? Um, if each one of these is three inches, if I just go like that, that means that my bottom is about the same, same size as one of these boxes. So that means that my bottom needs to be three inches when I start. Okay, um, you can use this gridding technique for um, a lot of drawing processes, but you don't need to go more than just like a regular tic-tac-toe. Uh, just make this about nine inches. If it ends up being 10 inches, if it, that's all right. If it ends up being eight, that's cool. But ballpark your bottom to match up with about nine inches. All right, so I'm trying to make the bottom of my piece about three inches wide. So the very first thing I want to do is always is wedge my clay. And just remember from the last demonstration on wedging, um, make sure you thoroughly wedge and cut your clay just so that uh, you find any hard chunks in there and it also gets all the air bubbles out. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, if you're in doubt, always remember, just do about 50, 50 times, 50 to 100, and you'll be good to go. Should be working on your canvas, makes your life a little bit easier. Okay, so then make it into a sphere. We're gonna make a pinch pot first. Okay, take your thumb, put it right through the middle, and pinch. Okay, once you've gotten the beginning of it, we're gonna try to get this to be about three inches in diameter on the bottom, and that's almost right already. You see that? Um, it's like two and seven eighths across. So I'm gonna just make it a little bit wider, but not much. Again, I'm not worried too much about making this exactly nine inches. That's one of my favorite parts about this coil building process is the organic nature of of the building process. Okay, so make your pinch pot first. Take your time and pinch. Think a thousand easy pinches. Okay, this is also where um, a lot of people can go wrong. Okay, if you flare out too much initially, it's going to make your piece flop over. Okay, so what we're just shooting for is, since this is a smallish piece, around eight to 10 inches, 
uh, we want the walls to be very thin, less than a quarter inch, and keep pinching until you get it to be about that thickness all the way around. You can hear my kids knocking around upstairs, running around doing something. Take your time. When I'm pinching, I like to pinch like this. Oopsie, where are they? Here we are. Like this, not like this, okay? Think, think like a, a lobster, not like... We look at the side view of this guy, it's starting to flare out a little bit, okay? What I like to do at this point here is to clean up the inside. And you'll hear me say this from time to time, but pots are like people, it's on the inside that counts. So I want to make sure that my inside of my piece is nice and smooth. Okay. I know some of you are thinking, well, I'm supposed to be making a coil pot. That is true. That is true. So I'm going to start coiling after I've got the base of my piece pinched. Okay. I'm not worried too much about the outside yet. I'm going to maybe rip it a little bit. Now, once I've gotten it about how I want the beginning of my piece to look, then I'm going to uh, make sure I'm very patient and make sure that I don't let my piece collapse by rushing. This is where your patience are, is going to come in. So that's good. It's the beginning of my piece. If I hold it sideways for you all to see, it's just a little, almost like a bowl. Okay. Um, now, depending on the culture that you look that you're looking at. It may be a wider bottom or that kind of thing, uh, but make sure you grid out your drawing first. It will make your life a lot easier. This is the way I like to coil build. Okay, so for those of you that took high school ceramics, you may, be, you may have been rolling coils and scoring and slipping and attaching everything that way. Um, I don't do it that way. I make big fat donuts and then I do a lot of pinching. Um, I think this is a little bit faster building technique, and uh, I don't have to add excess water into my joint. Um, so that's the reason I, I prefer doing it that way. But if, if you're comfortable rolling coils and scoring and slipping, and that's the way you learned in high school, then just go ahead and do it that way. It's fine. Okay, but the way I do it is like this. Um, take a chunk of clay, make it into a burger, so I've wedged it up. I make it into a burger patty, right? Then pinch a hole all the way through. And then I'm going to pinch it. It's going to take you a couple tries to get the hang of making these into donuts. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make it about the diameter of the rim of the piece where I'm going to put it on. Um, and the reason why I'm making it thick like this is because um, the way that you can join pieces of clay, remember, is scoring and slipping or pinching and joining um or i'm sorry pinching and yeah pinching and blending i should say um so i prefer pinching and blending the clay is soft um I, it's easier on your wrists if you have um if you have soft clay now when i am attaching this take note take note that the diameter of this is a little bit smaller than the diameter of this. Not much, just a little tiny bit, because I want it to go in, or actually I want it to go out a little bit, and it's easy for it to go out, um, it's harder to go in. So the, I'm gonna blend this up all the way around on the outside. And then I'm gonna blend it in on the inside. Blend it down, I should say. 
Notice I'm using the bat to turn the piece around rather than picking the piece up. That's the whole point of using a bat is that it's easy for you to move it around once you have that. And now I'm just gonna pinch. Pinch up. Now, if we're overanalyzing, okay, let's imagine this is, my, this is the start. Right here, that's the start. What I wanna do is I wanna pinch all the way around. Then spin it and pinch. Spin. Now this first section, I'm trying to just go about up to my halfway point of the apex of my belly. Um, not my belly, but the belly of the piece. You know what I mean. Come on, people. You got to laugh at that. You're killing me. All right, um, now I'm gonna rib the inside. So I'm right-handed, so I put the, the rib, the smooth rib in my right hand, and then I take my left hand and I put it on the outside to support that because this clay is still pretty darn wet. And I don't want it to be flopping out. Flopping is the devil, okay. This is about the point where you're probably going to start noticing gravity, okay? The key is, if you start notice that it's, noticing that it's flopping, you need to stop working on it because the more you agitate it, the worse it's going to get. So as soon as you notice it, then notice it flopping, let it dry for a little bit, okay? Go stick it out in the sunshine. Go do some math homework or whatever for a little while. You'll find that this is not a class in ceramics. You didn't sign up for ceramics. You signed up for a class in patience and disappointment. You're, you're going to mess up one of your pieces or more than one of your pieces. Um, it's not a big deal. We're going to be patient about it. And when we mess one up, we do not make a good friend of mine, Mary Clunan. Shout out to Mary. She told me this quote, and I just love it. We, we don't make mistakes, we make discoveries, right? Um, so that's my favorite quote with this project, is you're going to collapse one, and if you do, not the end of the world. Make my inside nice and smooth. And it's about a quarter inch all the way around. Um, what I'm going to do now is... I'm gonna take a break, because if I add any more to it, it's gonna start collapsing. Um, and that's where you're gonna, it's gonna just be experience from doing one or two of them that um, feeling before it collapses. Now, if it messes up, if it collapses, just re-wedge your clay and, and wrap it up, okay? Now, make sure that as you're working that you keep your bag of clay wrapped up tight so that it doesn't dry out. Um, what I will do is take like a wet rag and get it wet and just keep it in the bag while it's, while I'm not using it. And that's going to keep my clay nice and soft for a long time. It's not going to go bad, but it will if you, if you leave your bag open. Okay, here's my side view. So I'm looking here at, let's take this, hold it up next to my drawing, right? So if I'm looking at this, I think that I need to actually flare that out just a little bit more and fix the little areas along the edge. All right, so now what I'm doing is just pressing in on that side and using my rib on the outside to smooth that profile. Forget to use your bat. Spin the bat, not your piece. Beautiful.